Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some updates last week. Be sure to comment below if you can spot the difference in the shelf behind me. Last week, it was BB-8. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. We've got a video from the person over at the YouTube channel, Learn to Excel. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I couldn't find it. He has a video where he looks at a chart and how to create that chart with different scales. I'm calling out this video because it's just a reminder to me that it's the little things inside of Power BI that a lot of folks maybe just don't know. And so if you're not familiar with how to do this and to have different scales on a given access, check out this video. He hooks you up and points out how to do it. Alberto Ferrari over at SQL BI has got a blog post looking at blank rows in DAX. And blank rows, they are a little special. And as always, Alberto walks through the different things to consider when working with blank rows. He uses the two DAX functions, values and distinct to really illustrate how blank rows can mess with you. If you're not familiar with this or you wanna learn a little bit more about DAX and things to consider when using DAX functions and blank rows specifically, check out this blog post, links down below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. RC1 for SQL Server Analysis Services 2019 has been released. There were a bunch of features that are coming with this, but there's two specifically I wanna call out. The first item I wanna call out and personally my favorite in this release is query interleaving. And the idea of query interleaving is that short queries won't be blocked by really long queries, potentially. So this means that those short queries can get in from a CPU perspective, do what it needs to do, get out, and the long query can then continue. The potential for this is really better performance from a concurrency perspective. So as more little queries are coming in, those aren't gonna see those long waits and will be able to get in, do what they need to do, and everyone's happy. Also really excited for when that will actually hit Azure Analysis Services as well as Power BI. The other one I wanna call out is just improved performance for Power BI reports when doing live connections to analysis services multidimensional. It's great to see some focus on multidimensional and improvement for performance when running those reports. Check out the blog post for all the details in the release candidate, as well as it calls out those features that have come out in previous CTPs, which include calculation groups if you haven't even checked that out. There was an update to the way that summarized data from an export perspective behaves with build permissions. And so once build permissions were introduced, one of the things that happened is even though you can get access to the report, if you didn't have build permissions on the actual data set and you tried to export the summarized data, it would fail. The community was very loud about this. And so this is a great example of the community actually impacting changes in the product. The Power BI team listened to this and have updated because you've already got access to the summarized data because you can see the visuals. And so even if you don't have build permissions now, you will be able to export the summarized data for that given visual. That is assuming someone didn't actually block the export data capabilities for you. So that still holds true. Check it out again and make sure that it is working as you expect it to work. We got an announcement that custom branding is now available for Power BI. And what this means is if you've enabled that new look, one of the Power BI admins can go into the admin portal and define the custom branding for your organization. This includes a company logo. It includes a color setting, which I actually like the color setting as well because it's not the set colors that you have from a given app when you're publishing an app. You can actually specify your own hex code or RGB color scheme. So you can literally use any color you want. It also includes what's referred to as a cover image. So when you hit your home screen, you can actually have a specific image there. Maybe it's a themed corporate image and that will have a hello message for your given user. This is still in the process of rolling out at the time of this recording. My personal production tenant didn't have the feature available yet, but it should be available to everyone by August 27th. So be sure to check it out. Talk to your Power BI admin if they're not aware of it and let them know, hey, we can brand the new look now with our corporate theming. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Let me know down in the comments below. Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I would love to hear your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching 
keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.